Nui Loa. Hello, everybody. Welcome to another edition of the Rare Book Cafe. The book lovers rendezvous. And here I am with my generic cup of Kona coffee. <laughs> ah, good morning, my co host, Lee Lynn Ridge Books, Calhoun, Georgia. Hello, Lee. Hello, Ed. And I, I know this is your last um, uh, video from Hawaii. I noticed that you were, were really dragging that out a little bit this morning and uh, reminding us once again of the kind of coffee that we do not have. <laughs> well, I don't have much longer to say it, so I'm going to no. take advantage of it while I can. Are you taking and some home with you? The empty coffee cups? No, no, <laughs> <on> the coffee. <laughs> Yeah, you know, and some macadamia nuts for little, little yeah, gifts yeah. for little friends to remind them how cold and shivering <laughs> they are in the great Northeast. That's right. And our guests this week are two authors, co-authors of a new book they're going to tell us about. I mean, they are also exhibitors at the upcoming Flair, Florida Antiquarian Book Fair. Uh, Wibby Ware and Charlene Ball. Good morning, ladies. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, how are you doing, Ed? If I was doing any better, I'd be you. <laughs> <laughs> and I would be you because I, like most book dealers, we're all secret authors on the inside and, and just dying to, to have our um, manuscript published someday. Congratulations on your new book. Thank you so Thank much. You. Yes. You want to and uh, murder at the book fair? Dun 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 dun. Murder at the book fair. Here it is, and <laughs> Libby on. will tell you something about it. Well, why don't we start right there? Go ahead, Libby. Okay, so as you can see on here, it's written by Lily Charles. So that's a combination of uh, our names, names that are meaningful to each of us. Mine is for the toad Lily, and hers, her father's name was Charles. So that's how we came up with Lily Charles. Cool, and cool. We decided a to pseudonym. use a pseudonym because both of us had published um, a, an historical novel before, and so we were advised since this is kind of a different, you know, type of book, to uh, to use a pseudonym. Mm -hmm. Uh, so this is the second book. The first book was Murder at the Estate Sale, and it takes place in Atlanta, Georgia. So the idea was, you know, we were fascinated by book dealers, of course, and it's about different places that book dealers go. So each of them has a different location, although we'll probably circle back around to Atlanta because that's where we live. Um, so this one takes place in good old St. Pete, St. Pete, Florida. And, uh, and it's set at the book at the Coliseum at the uh, St. Petersburg Antiquarian Book Fair. And, and while, are, you, while you mentioned that, now's a good time to, for a paid political announcement from our favorite sponsor, the Florida Antiquarian Book Fair, who is one of the uh, sponsors of this show coming up in May, March 1 through 3 at the Coliseum in St. Petersburg, Florida. Hope to see you all there. I remember this time, Lee. <laughs> yeah, I'm so impressed. So impressed. We've been and who are some to of the characters down in this book? to the show now. Tell us something about some of the characters in this book. Well, some of the cat the two main characters are two women booksellers uh, who are somewhat modeled on us, but not totally. And they go to the Florida Antiquarian Books Book Fair to sell. There is a murder of a respected older book dealer who is found dead in a parking lot. Yes. Totally and a thing you made. Me. It, it, it was, I was not any of the deal. Not, <laughs> it's not me either because I'm not respected. Well, well <laughs> you're safe then. And yeah, <laughs> right. And so then uh, they, they suspect a number of book dealers. And uh, they also find that one of the main characters, Emma, some of her most valuable books are missing and they, they disappear because this respected book dealer is getting a little on in years and a little forgetful. And he had come to her booth to look at Maybe some of Maybe it could be books. me. What? No. Maybe it could be me. <laughs> <laughs> and he wandered off and then he's found dead and the books are missing. 
So then take the story on from there. There are many other interesting characters who come in, including a, a um, print dealer who is somewhat uh, disrespected by some of the other book dealers because they suspect him of cutting, cutting prints out of books. What a horrible thing to do but he doesn't really but they suspect <laughs> him of it and uh, <laughs> then they get uh, they meet some shady characters along the way uh, so we won't tell you anymore we hope you can all right well what's it like how do two people write one book or would one write a chapter the other writes the other does one write the other edit how do you do it what's your process yeah, yeah the basic uh program is that i normally write from Molly's point of view, and Charlene writes from Emma's point of view. And so what we'll do is, let's say I write a chapter, then I'll send it to Charlene, and then she'll look over that chapter and make any revisions, you know, that she wants to do, and then she'll write the next chapter, and then she'll send that back to me. And so that's how it goes. Sometimes I'll write from Emma's point of view, sometimes she'll write from Molly's, but, um, Charlene is very close to her character, and uh, if I have her doing something she thinks she wouldn't do, then you know, mm -hmm. I get I get told mm -hmm. I get told mm -hmm. not to do that. Yep. Now, Lee, about, I, oh, I, was Lee, I know you are a the, Go ahead. Yeah. I was just saying, Lee, I know you're a voracious reader, and I and have you read both books? And uh, oh yes, or, uh, uh, in fact, anyway. for uh, I've read all four books. And actually, Libby and Charlene have come to Calhoun to our book club for the first two, for Lom, for both of mm -hmm. both your individual books, yeah. Um, and actually, I wrote a blurb mm -hmm. for Murder at the State Sale yes. mm -hmm. on the cover of the book, which was a lot of fun. And um, a, a fun thing about this one, particularly because we're so familiar with the book fair, is trying to figure out if any of these characters are based on actual dealers that we know. <laughs> um, um, and I'm not sure about that. And I'm sure they would not divulge whether they were or not. All of our characters are the product of our imagination. Right? Yes, yes. <laughs> and I, you probably say that in the first of the book too. Yes. <laughs> but but it's it's fun because some of, you know, it's fairly easy to stereotype uh, any group of people, you mm -hmm. know, like well-respected elderly. Mm -hmm. you know, right. there, are, there are a lot of guys that come to the book fair that could be that victim. Right. Mm -hmm. you know, there, there are. So it's fun to read. Um, it's these two books, the detective, the um, mystery books are very different from their first two, which were historical novels that, obviously required a tremendous amount of um, research and um, I know were a, a much, uh, I guess you would say a heavier, um, you know, a, 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 a more serious read, um, mm -hmm. but but certainly, um, certainly well worth reading. Yeah, but but the, the mystery books are fun. You know, I'm, I'm a big mystery fan and, and um, and they've, they've been a lot of fun. I'm looking forward to the third one. Great. I'd like to add yeah. one thing about the books is that most mystery books that are set, say, in a bookstore or, uh, will have the owner of the bookstore spend very little time in it. She or he <laughs> are usually out uh, solving the murder and you don't hear much about books or book selling or anything. We like to put a lot about book selling and about books in ours. At the beginning of each chapter, there's a description of an antiquarian book, with, yeah. just like you'd see in the catalog. And so we like now, to Ladies, you are book dealers as well, uh, Toad yes. Lily Books. And do you also share the store between you? Or do you each have your own store? Well, we don't have a store. We sell you know, book fairs and out of our homes. And um, so Charlene pretty much specializes in children's and illustrated classics. Mm -hmm. And I do a lot of uh, occult and I've gotten very heavily into ephemera. And so a lot of my ephemera is about 
say the women's movements of the 70s and LGBTQ issues. And um, let's see. I guess those are my main categories. Civil rights. Yeah, I mean, I sell, yeah, I sell some other things. I used to sell a lot of African American, but um, but I bought it all. That. <laughs> Excuse me. I said, but I bought it. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> uh, we and what, cleaned you out. What our our listeners may not know is that Libby and Charlene are married to each other for about five years now. Or since twenty sixteen. Oh, longer than yeah, that I remembered. Yeah, yeah, eight years yeah. now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, wow, eight well, years in that, and you're in that, yeah. Yeah, we all lose count because of COVID. You know, six seems. I know. (laughs) What happened to those years? Yeah. Yeah. What about some two years in our life that never existed? Yeah. So tell us what you bring to Florida. Tell us what you bring to Florida. Okay, you want to go first? Uh, Books, yes. Um, Well, this is one of the books that I'm taking to Florida. It's called Russian Wonder Tales, and it's it's kind of um, not very often found. It's a beautifully illustrated book uh, from... A beautiful cover. It is a beautiful beautiful cover, cover. isn't it? And it is illustrated by the well-known Russian designer Ivan Bilibin. There's a picture. Let's let's get that in there. He was a... (laughs) Okay, can you see it all right? Yeah, it's oh, yeah. the same picture as the cover, but it's just gorgeous. It's from, um, well, he he illustrated a lot of Russian fairy tales in Russian for the government. And then this was produced uh, in English. So I think it's a, re- a really beautiful book. And another one that I have, or that we both have actually, is Poe's Tale of, Tales of Mystery and Imagination. This is from... Um, 1919, the Harry Clark illustrations, black and white. And let's see if I can find one of them. They're really dramatic too. Uh, you know, over the over the weekend, I'm not much of a sports fan, but <laughs> I happened to be with someone. They said to me, "What would Edgar Allan Poe think if they knew that a football team was named after his Raven?" <laughs> <laughs> Never more. <laughs> Never more. <laughs> That's about what he would say. And finally, this is a, I don't know if you can see this cover very well. It's so pale. But it is an oversized um, edition of A Child's Garden of, Ver- of Verses uh, from 1900, illustrated by the team uh, of Ethel, let me get her first name, Ethel Mars and Maud Hunt Squire. And they were a couple in 1920s Paris. They knew Picasso and uh, Gertrude Stein and all those. In fact, Hemingway those, and uh, Hem- yeah, Hemingway and all Fitzgerald. Them. Right. They lived together uh, openly, and they're buried together in a cemetery in Paris. Ooh. Oh, so they're um, they're a well known. Uh, they were a well known uh, couple in that scene. Here is an illustration by them. Let's see if I can get, can you help me with that? Hard to see. It's very pale. Yeah. Oh, are they watercolors? I think they are watercolors. Yeah. Yes. And uh, they are, and they did pen and ink illustrations all the way through. Also, let's, there was one that goes across two pages. It's really beautiful. Here's here it is. Can you see that? Excellent. Yeah. Yeah. Very nice. So those are some books that uh, that we're proud of and that we're bringing to the book fair. And Libby has some too. Yeah. So I would say probably my best seller at the Florida Book Fair is a quilt, and. Um, you know, I got, I get lots of people in there wearing all black and tattoos and, <laughs> you know, and so they, they are, they over are the yeah, they books. are good buyers, <laughs> you know, they'll buy stacks of books. So this one is called Witches Still Live and it's by 
Theda Kenyon. And this came out in 1926. And her first name is an anagram for death. But she lived to be 103 years old. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe that's the key. <laughs> And so this is a book about just all sorts of stuff. I mean, it says the dark arts, but, you know, just flipping through it, it doesn't look, you know, all that dark because it's about, you know, fertility cults and, you know, different, um, different ceremonies that witches have. And so she's just writing about what was going on in 1920. In the 1920s, you know, I think about like, um, What's his first? Is it Gerald Gardner? I think it's Gerald Gardner. With the yeah, who the kind Wiccan. of yeah, who kind of uh, in the fifties kind of revitalized you know a Wiccan movement, which people mm -hmm. say goes back mm -hmm. to you know ancient times, and so I think about that in the fifties, but I don't think a lot about <laughs> witches in the twenties. <clears throat> so it's all about you know how to cast a spell, how to combat a spell. Witchcraft and medicine, bridal customs, childbirth, moon laws. So this is a pretty rare book. Um, when I looked it up, I couldn't find any in the trade. And then um, I looked in OCLC and they have uh, only two copies of the American edition. And then there's also one Canadian edition. You know, you've got me thinking now. I'm, I think my pseudonym might be Yeoman, Y-O-M-E-N, which is... Uh... An anagram for money. Well, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see how well that works. Libby, was that book yeah. issued with the dust jacket or was it? Uh, no dust uh, jacket. No dust jacket. Yeah. So here's one about alchemy. And this one's mm -hmm. rare also. Yeah. It's by A.E. Wade. <laughs> and he was prominent in The Golden Dawn. And so he has written numerous books about different aspects of, um, you know, different spiritualists and uh, spiritual, you know, mm -hmm. occult books. Mm -hmm. um, and so this one is just all about alchemy and the hermetic movement in modern times, alchemy in China, Byzantine alchemy, just everything you might want to know about alchemy mm. and i can't tell you how many copies of this are in the trade because i forget <laughs> it's a beautiful cover. but yeah it's a it's, it's rare also charlene i see you looking uh, stage left there do you have a bookstore cat there's a dog, uh, oh, a dog a bookstore and i had to, i threw a toy to him <laughs> get him off get him away <laughs> we're delighted for him to join us yeah, it's it's he's, Libby's dog Grover. He, well, you know, whenever I get on, a, I mean, he's just like a little kid. Every time I get on a Zoom call, like he'll find a squeaky toy or just like think of it a way to make the most noise. You know, it's like a kid. Your kid can be off in his bedroom doing nothing. You get on the phone and it's like mom, mom, mom. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, yeah. so um, in the late nineteenth century, there was a big spiritualist movement. And part of it was spurred on because of the Civil War and a lot of people, you know, they wanted to contact their, their people, you know, who had passed on. And so there were several newspapers that came out at the time. And this one is called The Banner of Light. Let's see if you can get that. Hmm. And that's from 1870. And I have three copies of it. Wow. And, you know, because it's newsprint, you know, it's a, it's a little ragged around the edges, but, but also because it's newsprint, you know, it's, it was a great find mm -hmm. that some of those are still existing. Mm -hmm. So this is um, right now my most expensive book. The and Price of Salt. Price mm -hmm. of Salt. So mm -hmm. it was written, as it, it says, Claire Morgan. But Claire Morgan is really Patricia Highsmith. And so, yeah, so she was using a pseudonym and the price of salt was made into a movie that came out a few years ago called Carol, because one of the main characters is called Carol. And one of the things that 
besides the fact that it was written by a very famous author, is that it was one of the first cult books that actually had an ending where two women could get together because before, before that, you had to die, to commit suicide, mm -hmm. turn straight and marry a man. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, it was obscene material. Mm -hmm. And of course, you know, it's not like we have now all these book bans, but it was the post office that was okay. keeping track of, you know, what was obscene, so-called, you know, there's, that doesn't have to be any sex, but just the fact that you have lesbians who live happily ever after <laughs> makes it obscene <laughs> and you can uh, be punished for, uh, you know, sending it through the mail. Well, I hope that so, sells quickly at the fair. Well, and the other thing, I haven't gotten to the best part yet, and I can't show you because it's kind of tight and I don't want to crack it open, but it signed, first it signed Claire Morgan. Mm -hmm. And then after Claire Morgan, in parentheses, it says PH. So oh. you know, Patricia Highsmith. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you'd have to be in the know. And it's also signed by Mary Jane Meeker, who was her partner for a short while. And she wrote a book about their relationship called Highsmith. Mm -hmm. So that's what, that's really what makes it so expensive because I mean, even by itself, I have another one that's $500 and that's without the signature. And so this is the first time I've ever seen one that had a signature. Well, that's exciting. That That's exciting. I hope it does yeah. really well. Um, and going back to Murder at the Book Fair, you know, and Murder at the Estate Sale, Murder of the Estate Sale, the emphasis is on the occult, mm -hmm. your your field, and the books that are stolen at in Murder at the Book Fair are children's books, right? Mm -hmm. You know, illustrated children's books. So y'all been able to bring your own interests into both of those books, and also we have the developing relationship between Molly and Emma. Mm -hmm. But uh, you know, we shall see what happens there in the next book. What is the next book? It's Murder at the Literary Festival, and it takes place in North Georgia. Ah. Uh. <laughs> you may remember a while ago, gosh, probably like, you know, 15 or so years ago, there were some little literary festivals in Georgia, and they started it in Eatonton because you had right. Joel Chandler Harris and Flannery O'Connor right. and Alice Walker, who were all from that area. And I forget the man's name, it was Glenn somebody, and he was a professor at uh, Georgia State University. Well, then he started moving it around, so he would go to Columbus because that's where, um, no, 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 no. Of Carson McCullers Carson was from, and a couple other people that, you know, are more obscure and I don't remember, but, so I went to a few of those and, you know, dealers would set up. We went to Madison one day and, um, uh, Benny Andrews' brother was there. Oh. What is his name? But the one who's the artist who illustrated yeah. his yeah. books. So, um, Raymond, we actually got the Raymond. idea for the yeah. We actually got the idea for this. We were staying at a place called Parker Ranch, which is kind of a it was a B and B up in the mountains, and somebody we knew up there had a drone. And she's a big photographer. And so it was a drone that was taking pictures. So we were, we started talking about, you know, what if we had a murder mystery set up in the mountains and that a body was discovered by a drone. Oh, so that's mm -hmm. kind of, you know, the beginning yeah. of okay. that book. Well, we will look this forward cool. to that. <clears throat> and if you ever need me to write another blurb, I'll be delighted to. Oh, that was great. Yeah, I love that. Was that. Wonderful. All right, Libby Charles, before we let you go, why don't you tell our listeners where they can get a copy of your book? Well, wherever books are sold, uh, we emphasize your own local independent bookstore. They can <laughs> if you have, if one. have one. <laughs> if you have one anywhere. Otherwise, um, Karis Books in Atlanta carries it. Um, and they've been very good. They let us do our... Uh, our book signing there for the and uh, excuse me and also we will have copies at the Florida Antiquarian That's Book right. Fair. That's we'll right. have copies of both books, so people that are there, you can stop by our booth. It's totally books. Congratulations! I wish you the best of luck with it. And before we go, Lee, why don't you take us out with a final blurb about the 
Florida Antiquarian Book Fair. Well, the Florida Antiquarian Book Fair will be celebrating its 41st uh, year at the Coliseum in St. Petersburg uh -huh. from March 1st through the 3rd, Friday night from, I think, 5 to 9, something like that, and then Saturday from 10 to 5 and Sunday from 11 to 4, if I'm correct. Mm -hmm. And tickets are available now online on the Florida Antiquarian Book Fair site. Um, Rare Book Cafe is sponsored by the Florida Antiquarian Book Fair, who is also sponsored by Biblio. So we thank all of their help and all of their participation. And if you have things you'd like for us to cover on Rare Book Cafe, let us know. Um, if you're a dealer who's coming to Florida and would like to come on and tell us what you're bringing, let us know about that too. Uh, and you'll be able to see this, this episode probably in about a week or so on YouTube, mm -hmm. Instagram, and Facebook, and as a podcast. And then oh. it will be February, and I think we've got a good lineup coming up for uh, the um, uh, Black History Month in February, and look forward to having everybody tune in then. Thanks again, folks. Yes. Bye-bye. Right. Thanks, Ed Thank you. Thank you, Libby Charles. Bye.